All right, welcome everybody. This is part one of Fusion, 3, Fusion 360 3D printing and prop making. This is going to just be a basic rundown of everything that's in Fusion 360, just to get you started off, uh, not to overwhelm you or anything else like that, because it is a lot of stuff to understand how to use. So let's take a look at the basic interface of Fusion 360. This is what you get when you load it. Once you've installed it and you boot it up for the first time, this is what you're going to see. So we have across the top, just your standard files, saving, undo, redo, pretty simple, here's your project title. And then we have here, is your different workspaces. So you get your design, render, animation, these are all your, your standard interfaces. We're going to stick it with design, and this is what you'll see. It's a stark white, really bright environment. And if you're like me, you like dark white. So what I'm going to show you how to do is go down here to display settings. And then go to environment, and you can change it to a different color. I like dark gray. It's just a little bit easier on the eyes. So in the top right-hand corner, you've got kind of your orientation. So front, right, left, back, top, bottom, all that stuff. If you click on it, it will bring you right to that orientation. And it you hit these arrows, it'll rotate it for you. So pretty simple. To move the interface, you actually hold down shift, and then center mouse button will move it. And if you just use the center mouse button, it'll actually drag it. So let's start off by creating a cube. So we're going to go up here to create sketch. It's going to give us our orientation. We have three different planes to choose from. So let's go with front, and it's going to bring up your sketch palette. It's got all these different options, what it shows you, dimensions, constraints, all that stuff like that. So let's go to create, and you'll see now that our menus have changed, so it's got different options, creating lines, rectangles, circles, splines, mirroring, you can do a fillet, you can trim, or even offset. So let's just go here, and if you click on create, it'll give you even more options. So we're going to click on create, Go to Rectangle, and Center Point Rectangle. You'll see right here, this is our center point. It actually changes when you click on it. And then we're going to make ourselves a cube that's 40 by 40 millimeters. So we're going to finish the sketch. There's our cube, right in the center. And we're going to select it. It's going to change color, and it's going to let us know down here in the corner that we do have one profile selected. So let's make a cube. Let's go up here to extrude, and it's going to give us the option to now extrude this shape one way or the other, or right here for direction, we can go two-sided, which gives us the option to change how much either one is extruded. Or we can go to symmetric, which gives us both on either side. So we know it's a 40 millimeter cube. So let's have both sides get extruded 20 millimeters. And we've got our cube. Let's zoom in a little bit to that. And we'll go right at the front. So then clicking that, it gives us the right front. So now let's look at some of the different modifiers we have. So we've got press pull, fillet, chamfer. All these different ones that we can use to build a shape. So if we choose fill it, and we click on this edge, it'll actually allow us to put a nice curve, and it shows us in the box what the radius is. So let's let's put it at five, just like that. Hit enter, it'll set it. Now let's click chamfer and let's do this full edge. So chamfer puts a nice essentially 45 degree edge on it. And it's got two options. You can do equal distance on either side or two distances. And you'll see how when you click it it goes from one arrow to two arrows. So if we go two distances we can essentially pull this as far as we want or pull this as far as we want. You see how after a certain amount, Fusion tells us it can't do it. It's because we're going past 
this corner right here. It's having trouble calculating past that. So let's keep it at equal distance. Let's put it at five. Actually, let's put it at four just to keep that little bit of curve. Go up the other side. And go four. So now we've got a nice curve and two slope sides. Let's put something interesting in the middle. So to put something on an existing object, you can click on any of the areas. So we'll click here, and we'll go to Create Sketch. And let's put a circle. And put it right in the center, and we'll make it, we'll make it 20 centimeters, or sorry, 20 millimeters. Select the circle. Now let's ex let's extrude it. So we've got two options now. We can extrude it out, which will add to the object, or if you pull it the other way, it'll switch it to cut because it usually knows that you're actually going through an object. So let's bring it all the way to the back side. Get OK. Now we've got a perfect circle cut right here. Now let's select that circle, and go up to fill it. We can actually put a nice soft edge on that, just like that. Now let's go around in the back, and we spin it around using shift and center mouse button. Let's go to chamfer, select this, and we'll make that a nice slope break. Those are our two sides. Now let's make the inside a little bit more interesting. So let's select this face again, create a sketch. Click down here to get more options. Let's make a polygon. So polygons are shapes that have more than four sides, or more than six sides. But you can also change how many sides it has. So if we hit tab, because we're currently changing the size of it, if we hit tab and we change how many sides, we can do seven, or eight, or five. So let's do five. And then you'll see that we can still move it around to change the size. So let's make it about that big. So let's select it, go to extrude, and then pull it through the object. Just adjust that a bit. So now we've got a nice shape right through it, and we can actually take that shape and bring it around the entire circumference of the circle. And we can do that by going down to our timeline, which is right here. And our timeline shows us every action that we've taken. So there's the extrude right there. There's the shape we created. And there's where we chamfered the back. And we put a fill on top. So let's take the shape, we'll go up to create, create a pattern, circular pattern. It's going to ask us a couple of different things. It's going to ask us what object we want to select, which is this one, what axis we want to put it on. Now, you can select X, Y, Z axis here, the origin. Actually, just click. And it'll give you all those different shapes. Now, right now, it's giving us 18 shapes. So let's bring that down. Let's actually just go with 8. Shows us a preview of it with these little ghost images. And then we hit OK. And there we go. There is our shape rotated around 8 times. There's the front, there's the back. Now there's another option for this, which is rectangular pattern, and also pattern on a path, but if we go with rectangular pattern, let's put some side detail on it. 
So we'll click on this plane, create a sketch. And we'll just take a rectangle, and we're just gonna just chuck it on here, just like that. Doesn't need to be any specific size. So now we're gonna select it, go to extrude, and let's extrude it in just about that much. It's about two millimeters. So we've got that there now. And now we're gonna go back to our timeline, select it, go to pattern, rectangular pattern. Now it's got a couple of different options. So it wants to know what direction we want to go. So it's giving us the same option at the origin. Or what we can do is we know we're gonna bring it down this side, so we can actually just select that edge. And you can grab this arrow, you can pull it down to where you want it to go. You pull it down all the way to the bottom or right to there. And then quantity is currently three. Let's put that at five. And there you go. Now you've got that edge with that rectangle. Now let's say you want to take all this and put it on this side as well. So that's pretty easy. You just go down to your timeline and select your pattern and your initial. You're going to go to create, mirror. It's going to ask you what you want to mirror. You've already got both of those selected. Mirror plane. And you can select on different planes on the actual object of what you want to do, but we want it to go right in the middle so it's on that side. So we're actually just going to select the origin for the It's going to put it right on the other side for this. Go OK. And there you go. Now we've got both sides all set up to go. Now the other thing we can do is use what's called revolve. And revolve actually will take a shape and revolve it around an axis. So let's uh, let's go here to the front. We actually want it to start at the origin. So if you just click create sketch and you don't have anything selected, it will ask you what plane you want to go on. So we're gonna say let's go on this plane at the back. I'm gonna go up here, and we're gonna go to the line to draw a line. We're going to start at the very center. We're going to draw just a basic shape, just like that. We're going to close it, and when you close a shape, it changes color and shows you that it's now a closed object. But this object's also inside our already plane with Q. So if you make this into a 3D object, it is going to combine it with this one because you have it inside it. So let's go finish sketch. Now we're going to go to revolve. It's going to ask us what we want to revolve. We've already had it selected. It's going to ask us the axis. So let's tell it revolve it around this one. Now you'll see because it's inside it, Fusion 360 assumes that we want to cut that shape out, but we can actually add to it. So join. Now it's actually going to add it to this shape. If you don't want it to be a complete circle, you can change it to angle, which it already was. If you do full, it doesn't give you the option. It just does a full 360 or full. But you go to angle and you say you don't want it to be 180 degrees. It'll give you that, just like that. Now, I accidentally hit enter, so it made it. But we can actually go back in, go to your timeline, right click on it, edit the feature, and we can actually change it from an angle to the full. So now we've got our little top, <laughs> little top hat, and we can even go up to the top here, give that a fillet. Give this a chamfer, like that. You can modify it any way that you need to to create the shape that you want. Now, these two are interacting here, so we've got the revolved object interacting on this flat plane. And if we go in and we select fill it 
can be spun like this, instead of rounding it like this, it's going to round it the opposite way. Like that. And you see how if you make it too big and it goes past the edges, it can't calculate it. So let's make it nice and small. Just like that. And those are some of the most basic functions of Fusion 360 for modeling. So stay tuned for part two. We'll go through a little bit more of the advanced stuff. And then by the end of all these different tutorials, you should be able to create your own uh, 3D models for cosplay, for prop making, and for 3D printing. So stay tuned for part two.